Okay, welcome back. We are here with the third and final session of Voice of the Customer here at AWS On Air as part of reInvent 2020. Whew, that was quite a mouthful for an intro. My name is Nick Walsh, technical evangelist here at AWS, and I am joined by Vicky Leda, Managing Director of Investment Research Engineering over at Goldman Sachs. So Vicky, thank you so much for joining us to talk to us today. Hi, thanks for having me. Wonderful. So, uh, you know, many folks have probably heard of Goldman Sachs before, an extremely prominent financial services institution. Um, but, you know, just for uh, everyone out there, could you talk to us a little bit about uh, Goldman Sachs and, and sort of your work there um, on the investment research engineering side? Yeah. So, as you mentioned, Goldman Sachs is an investment bank, and I specifically work in the investment research business, uh, which is almost like the think tank of the firm. So we provide trade ideas and investment recommendations to our clients. And, you know, we, we cover economies and stocks around the world and uh, clients from the, you know, the individual markets clients to the big corporation. So it's a very uh, varied business. And it's, um, you know, very much a 24 by 7 business. And so for us, uh, especially being a sort of digital business, uh, performance, scalability, reliability are all paramount importance. Um, and so my, my focus over the last 18, to 18 months or two years has been really uh, on uh, creating a cloud strategy and executing on the cloud strategy for investment research so that we could, we could get the resiliency and the scalability that we were looking for. Yeah, and you know, in your own words, you said the work can feel sometimes like the the think tank at, at a much larger institution where you may be, um, you know, coming up with a strategy or or uh, some of the initial implementations for architectures. Uh, this resonates, you know, a, a lot with some of what we heard in Andy's keynote around focusing on innovation, making it a proactive effort, such that you're not on the back foot when, uh, you know, on un, un, unforeseen situations could occur, like what we've certainly seen in the last uh, twelve months. But, um, you know, this is uh, certainly you're not your first rodeo here at reInvent. Uh, if I remember correctly, you presented last year on successfully migrating this research portal to AWS. And ultimately, there, the, what seemed like the best fit was a hybrid architecture. Um, now, there's sort of, you know, we always say use the best tool for the right job. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of reasons why that ended up being the best solution. So uh, if you don't mind, could you walk us through a little bit about what that process looked like and, and how you performed that migration? Sure. So, yeah, so we were actually one of the first ones at Goldman Sachs. So Investment Research was one of the first groups at Goldman Sachs to actually migrate to the, to the cloud. And um, it's an interesting story because we were not a new, new business. We're not starting from scratch. It was definitely a migration story. And, and uh, the challenge with the migration story is that you have to you know, carry on supporting your, your clients and, and your business. You can't disrupt and start from scratch. And so the hybrid approach was the, the chosen approach at the time, and it was successful. It got us to the cloud and the US uh, in, a, in a speedy and effective way. Um, and I'm happy to say now that we're fully in AWS, and, and so uh, on-premise is almost like a, uh, a distance memory, but we're still there. <laughs> um, and, um, but now, like, now we're fully in AWS, we can really we kind of reshape our architecture a little bit. Uh, actually quite quite significantly, I would say. Um, we're really leveraging a lot of the cloud native capabilities. We, we've moved to a very event-based architecture, stateless architecture, and um, we, we use MSK almost like our office orchestrator. It's really the heart and the, uh, the backbone of, of our infrastructure. Um, and so a lot has changed, a lot has changed since uh, my talk last year. I can certainly imagine, uh, you know, we, we try to do the best with the tools that we have. And oftentimes the tools that we had for on-premises deployments look quite different than, than the tools that are available in the cloud. You hinted at event-driven architectures, building in a cloud native fashion. Um, you know, there's this open-ended question that everyone asks that was in a similar position as, as I imagine your team was, which is how should I perform this migration? Where do I start? How do I prioritize? Um, sure. You know, I'm, I'm, everyone thinks of change as this like clean wave that just happens uh, equally across all fronts, but that's really not oftentimes the reality. Um, how did your team go about prioritizing what bits and pieces to uh, migrate as time went on? 
Yeah, so it's a really good question. I mean, we, we took a very client-centric approach. So we looked at the key capabilities that our clients use day in, day out, and prioritize those because those are the capabilities that actually would benefit from the added capacity and availability. And so it was very much a client-centric approach. And then, you know, moved down the stack and anything that was sort of uh, less client focused was took a secondary priority. Um, and so and that's the, the sort of approach that we chose. It worked. It got us to sort of immediate benefits from a client standpoint. Uh, you know, just after deploying the first service in AWS, we were able to see the dramatic improvements in reliability and performance. And so, uh, you know, taking a client-centric approach paid off because the, the benefits were very visible from day one. Yeah, you know, this, um, what you're describing is something that internally sounds a lot like the working backwards process. Uh, we start with customers first, which in this case would be you. And it sounds like you started with your customers and figured, how do I deliver the value the quickest to those end users? And oftentimes this doesn't reflect in an engineering design doc review, right? This is a truly top down strategy uh, that everyone should be aligned on because that may not be something that, you know, one individual engineering team would be able to detect and be able to uh, optimize on behalf of an entire company. Um, but, you know, when we're talking about an international institution like Goldman Sachs, not just, you know, concepts like availability or resiliency, uh, we're probably talking about uh, like a global reach, right? You have customers everywhere and uh, the move from on-premises to cloud probably made it significantly easier to deploy infrastructure and serve customers internationally. Um, how did that sort of evolution play out from, you know, either a disaster recovery perspective or simply being able to be in more regions at once? So, yeah, multi-region is super top of mind for us. It's our current mission. So we started off with having presence in uh, US East across three availability zones. And now we are on a mission to actually um, establish our infrastructure in Singapore first, and then we'll be uh, Europe uh, at a later stage. And the, the goal really is not just from a resilience and disaster recovery standpoint, but also we want to improve the experience for our clients in Asia, who historically you know, have suffered because all of our infrastructure was always in, in the US. And so we really want to improve their experience as well. And I want to say sort of a, from a multi-region standpoint, you know, there's so many different approaches that you can take. Um, and we chose a, a live live approach. Um, so our regions are completely independent of each other. Um, and I, you know, respecting that design principle takes a lot of discipline and a lot of practice. Uh, and we also you know, we decided to choose sort of a, or select a products that came with global replication. And so you know, from a Redis to an S3 or a Dynamo, those were the obvious choices for us because we didn't want to be in the business of sort of uh, creating uh, replications across the region and maintaining that. It doesn't sound like fun to me. And so um, so that was a story. And I, and I want to say sort of it's, it's been, you know, now we're a few days away actually from our, I mean, our first uh, Singapore deployment, which I'm super excited about. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited about also, you know, exploring Europe next year and uh, and using the same infrastructure and SDLC to deploy the same infrastructure across the region is pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. You know, there are clearly uh, so many resiliency benefits to building with a region as your fundamental building block and not building everything up to a single bottleneck or, or a single point of failure. Um, but I'd imagine from a complexity management perspective, that probably helps out a lot too, right? Because you have these entirely isolated for, for all intensive like purposes around dependencies, isolated deployments from one another such that they, you reduce blast radius and you can have teams that can manage parts of the deployment without all having to bubble up to one bottleneck. 100%, yes. Wonderful. Well, uh, you know, going back to one of the points that you mentioned before, the desire to move towards a more cloud native, um, you know, uh, infrastructure configuration after you had moved uh, in what probably sounds more like a lift and shift initially, uh, to make the most out of uh, the managed services on AWS, you mentioned a little bit about uh, MSK before. Um, but you know, let's dive a little bit deeper there. Uh, what does cloud yeah. native look like now in the initiatives around that at Goldman Sachs? Yeah, so um, 
as I said, we, we came from sort of rewind three years. We were dealing with a monolith, you know, it's probably a common story, you know. Uh, so many dependencies, it used to take, I want to say, hours if not days to deploy anything into a production environment. Um, and so we're now in a event-based architecture. MSK, as I said, is the heart of what we do. Uh, we have Kafka streams that orchestrate everything we do. And, and so it's very nimble, it's very scalable. Um, and so one, one of the actual sort of added benefits of having this sort of nimble and sort of event-based architecture is that we can sort of plug in so many different listeners. And so, um, you know, we could have listeners for a, I don't know, a stock price change. And then on the back of that, we then sort of trigger events to, you know, push notifications to clients or uh, an update on our portal. Uh, it also means that we can easily distribute our data to different data stores in a, in a very sort of scalable way. And so now we, we're in a position where all our data is in AWS. We have it in Data Lake, we have it in S3, which is a game changer for us. We have a huge amount of data and having it all in one place where you can actually start sort of utilizing all these different data sets for, for you know, real commercial value is, is something that really excites me. Yeah, this certainly seems to be a recurring trend on uh, the voice of the customer show today, but it, for good reason, right? Uh, the amount of data that exists in the world is simply exploding. And I don't think any of us see any stop to that trend anytime soon. Um, and oftentimes, you know, from either just a gravity of the amount of data that you have, the time to prioritize building systems for it, uh, oftentimes there's a lot of on, there's a lot of value locked in data that may already exist. Um, I know we've spoken a little bit about machine learning before, uh, and I know that sort of downstream for automating decisions that becomes an immensely valuable proposition. Um, so with this move to more cloud native architecture, has that enabled your organization to uh, dabble with machine learning or, or unlock yeah. some of that value? Yeah, huge, huge game changer. And I must admit, we, we dabbled with machine learning before we were in AWS, and it wasn't uh, a great success story. <laughs> Uh, but now that we have sort of, as I said, all our data sets in AWS and we can easily sort of plug in uh, ecosystems like SageMaker or Athena to, to really uh, help us utilize this, these data sets, it's, it's a real game changer for two different reasons. On one side, you know, we have a real improvement in client experience because we can provide much more personalized and targeted offerings to our clients. Um, based on you know what we know about them, based on all the data that we have uh, collected, but uh, and on the other side though we we can also look at our internal processes and actually make uh, huge sort of efficiency gains. Um, you know, from uh, from our investment research analysts, the people who actually produce the ideas, they deal with huge amount of data sets on a day-to-day -day basis, and so for them to be able to actually Start running machine learning models without having to worry about actually getting all the data in a specific format or in a specific data store, or having to worry about the infrastructure running out of memory. You know, that's all sort of stuff of the past. And so that for us, you know, from a, my perspective, I think the real, real sort of game change is going to be on on the efficiency gain. I think we'll be able to empower our research analysts but also we'll be able to, to automate a lot of the sort of legacy processes that we have collected and sort of maintained over time. And so and our, our engineers have to support on a day-to-day -day basis. And so I think there's a huge amount of opportunity, I think. And I think you know, it's going to be uh, an accelerator, I think, for sort of innovation and delivering sort of value to internal clients and external clients. Certainly, you know, I've um, I've dealt with my fair share of uh, machine learning rigs, and and uh, I think I've torn out and torn out way too many hairs over managing drivers on GPUs and and updates to operating systems and making this whole set of uh, very particular configurations play nicely with one another. And you know, when I got my hands on SageMaker, and it sort of all of those operational concerns went away, and I could just focus on training the model and evaluating my experiment. I, I I've heard the same story from customers, and and you know, it it, it mirrors exactly yeah, what well, you just said. What a game changer! You can only focus just focus on your model now. Don't have to worry about anything else. <laughs> 
Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, again, even more recurring bits that I'm seeing here, machine learning, not providing value in a single way. It's sort of multifaceted, right? That's uh, driving internal decision-making with your uh, investment and research arm. You are able to uh, use your expertise to craft models that service insights to your customers directly as a part of your services to them. Um, and the ability to then automate redundant tasks that could otherwise be very costly from a, from a work hours perspective for people. Um, so it really sounds like, you know, some of these independent experiments that can all uh, have their own maturity cycles independent of one another that are all coming from data that you may have already had uh, <laughs> that had its value locked away previous to, to some of these cloud That's native right. approaches. That's right. Awesome. Well, so I a, lot, a, lot, a lot has changed in a year. Certainly, and, and a lot will continue to change in various ways. You know, um, we just talked a lot, a lot about things that are right on the horizon for uh, machine learning over at Goldman Sachs. But um, you know, you have a bird's eye view of a lot of this. I'd assume. Uh, what is next for you and your team? It, it really feels like the sky's the limit. But if there's anything you could share, I'm sure the, the viewers would like to hear as well. Well, so um, uh, my personal focus is going to be really working with my colleagues at Goldman Sachs, engineers at Goldman Sachs, to really. Um, accelerate the the cloud strategy and execution across across the firm, and so from you know we'll be moving more and more critical functions to to AWS, from you know our API platform to our IAM sort of capabilities. So there's a lot of exciting stuff happening, and I think um, it'll be an inter a really interesting and exciting year. Wonderful. Again. Uh... Vicky Letta, Managing Director of the Investment Research Engineering Team over at Goldman Sachs. Uh, Vicky, thank you again for joining us today. Unfortunately, we're out of time here on the broadcast, uh, but this video will be available on demand at a later point. We will be sure to follow up on Twitter, social media, and all of those uh, prominent spots you'd look for uh, for that information. Uh, but without further ado, Vicky, thanks again. It's been a real pleasure. We have more exciting content coming up here from AWS On Air. Uh, for the latest schedule, you can check the blog post over on the What's New blog. Um, but that is going to do it for us right now. So this is uh, Nick Walsh, Technical Evangelist here at AWS, uh, joined by Vicky from Goldman Sachs. Signing off here, and we'll see you all shortly. Take it easy, everyone.